Hi everybody, Nigel here with you again with part three of the Puma engine build and uh, thanks for tuning in. If you have a Puma or if you have an interest in Land Rovers in general and you'd like to see how they go together and come apart and everything, this is the channel for you. We're doing a nut by nut, nut and bolt, sorry, uh, nut and bolt restoration of a 2011 Defender uh, with 16,000 miles on it that I bought new. So whatever I find is Land Rover's fault, it's not somebody else's. <laughs> and God, we found a lot. Um, so this is part three of the engine build. Uh, if you want to see axles, gearbox, transfer case, Ashcroft diffs and Gwyn Lewis bits and pieces and bushes and paint and all that sort of stuff, then uh, then yeah, uh, fill your boots. There's lots to see. Um, so basically, yeah, part three is looking at, uh, we're going to be looking at uh, getting the oil squirters in, getting that filter into the number one main bearing, fitting all the bearing caps up, giving everything a final clean and possibly dropping the crank in. I don't know. Um, I've ordered new bolts and they're not here yet. New bolts for the crank with the main bearings. And I'm kind of wondering if I can just put the crank in and I can get the rods in and everything. And then when the new bolts come, I could just take the old bolts out and put the new ones in. I think that'll be okay. We'll see, uh, see how far we get. Um, anyway, um, so another thing I wanted to do is in these videos is answer questions that were raised from previous videos, like in yesterday's video, part two, um, a couple of comments were made, well one comment, one question uh, that I've seen, there may be some more there by now, but basically uh, somebody made a comment that I was perhaps going a bit overboard and going too far with this, well if you think I'm going too far then uh, you don't build engines, um, and if you've had no problems from engines you've built without at least plastic gauge in the bearings, you've been very very lucky. Um, another question uh, asked if the plastic gauge was good enough to check how spherical the bearings were. Um, first things first, spherical is not what we're looking for. What we're looking for is circularity. Um, what you're talking about is, is what the, the, the plastic gauge is looking for clearance. We're looking for what size the gap is. So basically what we've got is our, our bearing is like this, our block is like this, and then we're sitting our crank in it and it's going to sit on the bearing at the bottom and we're checking the gap at the top and that is our radial clearance, okay? So that's what we're looking at. So it's basically gonna be half of that. So if we've got five thou, the radial clearance um, is gonna be two and a half thou. So that's what we're, what we're looking at. Um, but when people talk about radial clearance in manuals and stuff, they are generally referring to one side. So it's kind of, mm, it's kind of not right really, but uh, anyway. Um, so, yeah, the, the, the question was basically asking, is plastic gauge adequate for checking circularity of the crank and everything, is what you meant, not, sphera, not spherical. Um, no, it's not. You could, you, could, you could use plastic gauge all the way around it and crush it and then see how it goes. But the thing is, you've got to remember that you've basically got, like I say, you've got this bearing shell here, you've got a crank sitting in it. So basically down here, you'll have no clearance whatsoever and then your clearance will increase as you come up the sides and over the top. Okay, so it's not really an indication. What you would do in that case is you would measure the bore of the bearing and check it for roundness, and you would measure the crank pin and check that for roundness. Now, this is a perfectly good engine that just leaked and was sludged up with EGR crap. That's why it's been stripped. Oh, it was covered in burrs and swarf everywhere and that, but that, that was just Ford's quality issues. So, um... So basically, uh, the engine's good, good oil pressure, not burning oil, not knocking, not rattling, not making any noises, it just leaked. So I'm not taking any, I'm not worrying about roundness and stuff like that. Um, my clearances are such that I don't need to worry about roundness. The tolerance they give for clearances in this engine are the biggest I've ever seen. They are huge. Um, and I don't mean the actual gap, I mean the actual tolerance they're giving you, the window. Uh, normally it's a very very tight tolerance and this is I mean like the, the what was it the big ends are um, 0 0.034 which is one and a half thou to four thou which is point 0.1 I mean that's like two and a half thou tolerance on the on the radio clearance it's huge so uh, yeah um, so basically um, then yeah, plastic gauge is not suitable for checking circularity, but it is suitable for checking that you've actually got some sort of gap there 
and they don't have a gap that's too big. Like if I plastic aged it and I had half a thou, okay, so um, what are we talking about, 12 microns, I would be a bit concerned because it's very doubtful you could manufacture a crank that true, so it would bind up as it was going out, which we talked about yesterday. Um, or if I had, say, 10 thou of clearance, um, which is um, which is what, 25 microns, or point, 0.25, yeah, 0.25, um, not 25 microns, 250 microns, then I'd also be concerned. Um, which is where I go back to, you know, somebody saying, are you going over the top? Just because the box of bearing says standard means nothing, okay? Um, it means nothing. You need to measure, you need to do some sort of checks. And believe me, if you're building, like in this thing, if I was building an engine for this, like 1,000 horsepower, whatever, I would be looking for very, very different clearances because you run different clearances depending on what you're going to do with the engine. But I would be certainly measuring, measuring and measuring and then measuring again. Um, and then maybe even overcheck with plastic gauge, but I doubt it. I doubt if I'd do an overcheck if I'd measured everything three or four times. So, um, yeah, so that's what we use plastic gauge for, is just to check what sort of clearance we've got. As I say, known good engine. I'm not worried about checking for roundness and circularity and everything because, let's face it, it's done 16,000 miles. I'm certainly not going to start getting it reground because a bearing pin is half a thou out of round. I'm not going to be doing that. So there's no point in checking it, is there? Um, but as I say, if it not rattled, smoked, it was being taken apart for a reason other than just the fact it leaked, then I would be having to do something else. Anyway, enough waffling. So, uh, as I say, we're going to get on this video, we're going to fit that filter, we're going to fit the oil squirters, possibly get the crank in. We're going to look at the piston rings. I've got some bad news about piston rings. Bad news for me, because I've been an idiot. Um, and I think we'll get the pistons rings fitted. And as I say, maybe get the crank in, we'll see. So uh, let's get to the bench and see what we're going to do. Right then guys, so here we are on the bench and you can see I've got my box of bits here. We've got the filter there, down at the bottom, we've got our oil squirters and the bolts for fitting. These oil squirters are the later type, by the way. I've now discovered the earlier type was just literally a piece of tube. Um, it was just literally a piece of tube that came up here and around. There was no restriction whatsoever, so they've obviously added these to improve um, to improve oil pressure in low oil pressure situations like where the oil is really hot, revs are low, obviously these valves will close but then you'll have the added disadvantage of your pistons will be being cooled so I, I don't know. Um, so you can see here I've got the E8 little because the bolts that hold them in are little E8 M6 bolts they're 8.8s marked on the top so it's an E8 socket, as you can see, it's like a, it's a Torx, basically. Um, it's like the inverse of a Torx, so it's called E8. Now, once again, our wonderful manual, I'm going to use some thread lock on them as well. Once again, our wonderful manual is, um, is really, really come to, come to glory. I'll, I'll take you up to the manual here. So if we look here now, okay, we can get on the computer screen and we can see that basically if we come here this is finishing stripping the engine down so we're going to remove the main bearing bolts take the crank out that's it and then we're straight into this is now um, assembly as you can see there underneath the engine it says assembly so we start off with the special tools we need which uh, you don't need that and where they show you it there's no flat on the engine anyway uh, that you could use a piece of wire that one there I've made that one there I've made that one there I've made and that one there I've made so we're all good there. So straight away, we're um, the, the grooves in the crankshaft thrust washers must face outwards. So install the crankshaft thrust washers, lubricate the thrust washers with the clean engine oil, install the crankshaft, and then lubricate the crankshaft journals and the crankshaft bearings, install the crankshaft main bearing shells. Oh dear. So you're going to put the thrust washers in first, then put the crank in, and then you can, oh, so I don't know what they're talking about. Um, assemble the caps with the arrows pointing forward and everything, and that's all right and everything, and it's got the torque. But if you notice, there's not a single mention of the oil cooling, the piston cooling jets. So just like with the fuel pump, no mention of it whatsoever. Um, so they, they tell you to take out the little, three little bolts that hold the, the, um, 
the actual sprocket onto the fuel pump, but there's like a hub on the fuel pump. And you have, there's a large nut at the end then. So I don't know if it's working that either. So uh, yeah, great manual that one. Um, I looked at the 2.2 manual and that one's exactly the same. They do talk about them. They know they're there, but they just don't tell you how to fit them. So basically what I've done, I've looked here and face ID, and I've got a list here. This is a, a basically a chart found online and we can see there on the left hand side you've got the 8.8 .8 column. I don't know if you can see on the top of these bolts if I can get the camera to focus. But there is actually an 8.8 .8 there on the bottom you can see 8.8. .8. So we know they're not particularly strong. Um, but if we can get the camera to focus again you can see M6 8.8 .8. We're talking 11.8 newton meters or 8.7 pounds feet. So that's what we're going to do them to, I guess, with some thread lock. But I'm a little bit concerned because, I mean, these things, if these come out, um, not only is that going to be running around in your engine, which isn't a good thing, that's going to fall out of the oil gallery. So you're going to have a piece of metal clatter around your engine and no oil pressure. Yes, just what you want. So I'm going to leave this for now. Um, I've put a request out on the Defender2.net, on the brilliant Defender2.net, fantastic forums if you don't want to go and have a look. Um, but there's a whole Puma section in there. So I've put a request in there if anybody knows what the torque should be. Um, I'm guessing with thread lock on them, with them done up to 12 newton meters, wherever it was, they're not going to come out. But I just want to be safe. <laughs> you know, I, don't, I really do not want them coming out. So, and I've got to wait for my main bearing bolts to come anyway, as I was saying, so we'll, we'll see. Um, so I think what I'll do now is put all this to one side. We'll put the lid back on there. And what we'll do is we'll start looking at the piston rings. Okay, and so on to um, looking at Audi badges. No, we're looking at piston rings. So these are our piston rings. And here is our piston in the vise. Held an aluminium jaws, okay on the uh, rod and then a piece of wood under here just to stop the piston from rocking around and then here we've got our piston ring pliers so these are basically the rings you've got you've got your first ring your second ring and your oil ring now sometimes oil rings come in three pieces where you'll have a central spring and then you'll have two little thin stainless steel outer rings you'll get your one piece where it's all just one big spring in, in, inside and it all just works together and then you've got this type here where it's two pieces and you can see this is basically a if the bloody camera will focus there we go we've got a coil spring you've got a piece of wire inside here for a certain amount of length and this will actually if i can grip it you can see this will actually close up okay so what we need to do is fit the ring with that closed that gap opposite the gap in the ring this actually there's a groove inside here. Probably this camera's working well today. There's a groove inside here that, that spring is going to sit in. So we want the gap to be opposite because the last thing you want is for the edge of one of these springs to catch on the edge of there and come out. So that's going to spoil your day. So because basically that's going to fit inside there. So you've got your ring there like that with the gap here. And then you've got this gap in the wire there. So that's going to go inside like that so it's opposite it doesn't need to be dead opposite it just needs to be you know, opposite ish um, and what I do is I fit the spring on the piston first and then fit the ring over it uh, because it's a lot easier than trying to put it on together um, second ring is marked here you can see here it is marked if you can pick that up you can see it says GOE top okay so this is the second ring um, and that's the top. It's important this ring goes the right way up because I don't know if you can see it, it's got a groove, like a, um, a rebate in the corner. Okay, you can make it out there. It's got a rebate in it, so it's sort of, it helps the oil ring, it scrapes as well as, um, as well as sealing. So that one's gonna go in. And then you've got your top ring here. Now, if you are reusing your oil rings like I am because I had no burning oil issue, no smoke, no nothing. The only reason I stripped this because it was leaking everywhere. Um, if you look at it, you can see it's a tapered ring and you can see only the bottom edge is worn. So what you need to do is take a photograph of your piston when you take it out, like I have here. And we can see, if we look at this photograph, this is a photograph of the piston as it came out. So we can see here we've got the bright and shiny one at the top with the shiny patch at the bottom. And we can see this one is the duller one, so we know that's the second ring that's got the top mark on it. And you can see here's our oil control ring. 
So there we go. So that's how that's all going to go back together. So, you know, you can't have enough photographs. You need a lot of reference. We'll find one I'm putting this, but I've got probably 150 photographs. Um, and you'll probably find when I put it together, I will have missed something. It'll be, you know, where does this wire and clip go? Where does this part of the wiring loom go? Does this hose run behind that panel or in front of it? That sort of thing. So um, what we're going to do is get these rings onto this piston. So I'm going to get the, the camera on the tripod and I'll show you how we do it. One more thing. You may notice on here there's a couple of dark patches. See on there? And that's corrosion. I've been a stupid idiot. I put the rings in an envelope and then before the winter I put everything from the engine internal parts in the house because I know that in the garage it gets quite damp. Um, so I, I tend to you know put anything that's going to rust that matters in the house and these were sort of in their envelopes between a couple of boxes or something and I forgot and you can see that you can see on the envelopes we've got some corrosion coming through so we've got a very slight amount of corrosion on these rings which is just stoned off luckily there's none on the diameters only on the faces and it is just literally surface corrosion I can't even feel that so I'm um, very lucky to get away with that um, otherwise I'll be getting new rings a couple of spots on here as well there's one spot there by my finger you can see there so um, yeah unfortunately uh, my fault so if you are stripping one of these at the winter time put it all indoors because garages do get damp this year was actually worse than ever um, my windscreen my windscreen my bonnet here on the Mustang was absolutely covered in brown spots and at one point I wondered if I had mice or rats in the roof and they were wheeling over the car um, but it wasn't it was just the, the dirt from the from the felt roof up there just condensation coming down it's ridiculous um, it was really really wet for a couple of days this year so it's all to do with the atmospheric conditions isn't it so let's get this camera on a tripod stop waffling and get on with getting these rings on okay so I've got a little pot here and in there I've got some mobile super 3000 which is the oil I run in this thing so I'm just gonna brush some oil in the groove just so we don't get anything picking up or galling or whatever in fact I may as well do it in all the grooves while I'm here It doesn't need to be soaked, it just needs to have a trace of oil in there. All these grooves have been previously cleaned out. Piston crowns have been done with Mr. Muscle oven cleaner, which is the best thing for cleaning up exhaust deposits, but don't let it stay on the aluminium for too long because it will attack. Okay, so there we go. So um, that's all oil dealt with, and I'm just going to put some on this spring. Just to help it when it's inside that ring to slip against it because it's it takes quite a lot of force believe it or not to compress these and they don't like closing up so I'm going to fit, fit this on here now I know that I've got the the gap we can see here where it all closes up so I'm going to put that back there we can slip this into the into the groove like so There we go, so that spring's gone in. Then we can take our oil ring. I'm going to put a drop of oil around here. Just so that it's got some there to be working on with. And then we can put the oil control ring. Don't need ring compressors for this one. Just pass it over. Just like so. I'm going to go all the way down and below it. And then I'm going to come up onto the spring and then feed the spring into the ring as we come up just to make sure that spring has gone in. It's so difficult to do on the camera. I don't want that ring, that end to pop in. So there we go. we can make sure that end's gone in there and then we can just make sure that we can squeeze this together and make sure that the ring will go flush into the groove all the way around if there's any point where the ring is tight in the groove or won't go in take it out clean it out you've got something left in there so it needs to slide around freely in there and it needs to go all the way around you need to be able to push it in 
without any resistance okay so that's that now the second ring as I said sorry about the dog the second ring has got a mark on here where it says top so we're gonna make sure we get that top piston ring compressors you can get these off Amazon or anywhere really they're very easy to use you put the the ring in there over the ends and then you just squeeze squeeze together and as you can see it opens the ring now you need to open the ring enough you're not going to snap it they will snap so you need to be careful but you want to get it open enough that you're not going to scratch the piston when it goes down you really need to avoid scratching the piston and you don't want it popping in that first groove There we go. Now I've got it just stuck on the edge. So rather than just push it up and let it go in, I'm going to take the pressure off it. There you go. Again, we're going to go around, make sure it goes all the way in, all the way around. You don't want any areas. Now when we actually come to fit these in the engine, we're going to make sure that all of these gaps are 120 degrees opposed. But for now, that doesn't matter. And then this one here, remember, it's got no top marking on it. But basically we can see that because it's a used ring, we've got the shiny section at the bottom, which is what I was referring to in the photograph. So I'm going to put this into the piston ring tool. And then again, just fit this over the top. We really don't want to break this ring. Again, don't just snap it in, take the pressure off it and let it go in. And then again, make sure you can, it goes all the way in, all the way around. Make sure there's no tight areas. That piston ring should just spin around in there like that with ease. It should flop about and have no resistance at all. If you've got any resistance at all, it's tight. Clean it out, clean the piston ring off. Everything needs to be all loose and fitting like that so it can all move around. Okay, so that's the rings fit. I've just got another two to do now because I've already done one to... To check my uh, my theory work so um another two to do and then i'll be back okay then guys so there we go i think we'll call that a day for this video we've got all the piston rings on i've put them away now in the dry um it's friday evening it's the first time it's not been raining for since i can remember about two weeks i think um actually it's not raining and the ground is dry and it's not blowing a gale wow you know Apparently it's going to be wet again tomorrow and for the next sort of five or six days, so yay! Um, uh, right, so basically yeah, we're going to call that a day. Um, engine block is here. I've actually stoned off these um, areas now where the, where the main bearings go down on. And I've also stoned off the main bearing caps as well, so any little irregularities that were there and now be gone. Uh, there were just a couple of tiny high spots where it's been knocked or whatever, I don't know. So, um, so that's all done. Uh, that will only improve the clearances, but we're talking microphones, we're not talking any anything like a thou. So um, there we go, so there's the engine, that will get wrapped up now for tonight. Um, hopefully somebody will come and give me some torque figures. If not, then I'm just going to have to go with the 12 newton meters um, and some thread lock and just hope they stay in there really. Uh, I guess they will, with thread lock on them and they're not going to go anywhere are they? So. Um, just trying to get her ball back so um anyway thanks for watching uh sorry it's been a bit of a short one but i wanted to get a video out for you rather than just um have you hanging on for days much like my modeling channel i haven't had any content on there for a while now although i have been making content in the background so uh anyway i'll see you all uh see you all soon for another one thanks for watching stay safe bye for now